Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am, as always, Inquisitor Aura, and this is how to roleplay in World of Warcraft. And today, we are going to be taking a look at the Worgen. Please note that these are just guidelines to socially acceptable and lore-friendly RP in WoW. There is pretty much a niche for every type and style of RP. What I'm telling you here are the generally accepted guidelines that will not get you ridiculed. Now, the first thing and probably one of the most important things you need to know about role-playing Worgen is that to understand what it is to be Worgen, you need to understand the curse and its roots. The curse started with the druids of the pack, who were the progenitors of the Worgen as we know them. They were druids in the age between the War of the Ancients and the formation of the Cenarian Circle, when druids could practice whatever they want with little consequence. They worshipped Goldrin, the Wolf Lord, whom even amongst the Ancients was considered particularly violent. And the druids of the pack dabbled in Goldrin's essence until they discovered something they called Pack Form which embodied the fury and power of the Wolf Ancient, including a great bloodlust. However, other druids and other druidic paths, such as the Druids of the Claw, became increasingly distrustful of the Druids of the Pack, and when Malfurion caught wind of the Pack's doings and discovered how difficult it was to control Pack form, he banned its use and the Druids of the Pack reluctantly capitulated. However, the Night Elves were at war with the Seder, the remnants of the War of the Ancients and the Burning Legion's first attempt to invade and conquer Azeroth. The Druids of the Pack were eager to assist in the war effort and begged Malfurion to reconsider his decision and unleash them in all their fury upon the Seder. Malfurion, however, refused. During an attack on the Seder, the Druids of the Pack defied the Arch Druids' orders and embraced Pack form anyways. In their haste, they lost control, succumbing to the bloodlust and attacking friend and foe alike. Malfurion managed to capture most of them and forced them to revert to their birth forms and ordered them to forego the use of Pack form ever again. There were two, however, who refused to give up, realizing that the direct transition to pack form was likely the cause of the form's instability. The first was Belisra, a priestess of Elune who lost her lover, Arvel, because of Malfurion's refusal to allow pack form. It prevented him from shape-changing into it during the attack, and he was subsequently killed. The second was Rolar, head of the Druids of the Pack. Now, Belisra surmised that the form could be tempered by Elun, the Moon Goddess. Together, they infused a Fang of Goldrin with the Staff of Elun into a scythe and began channeling the scythe's power into Rolar while he was in pack form. And it worked, only it changed pack form. No longer was Rolar a wolf but a wolf that walked like a man, the first worgen. The scythe gave the druids of the pack dominion over Goldrin's gift, and they renamed themselves the druids of the scythe in remembrance. With their newfound control, the druids of the scythe helped the night elves win the war against the satyrs. But that was only the start of the end for the druids of the scythe. Rolar, still angered over the loss of life caused, he believed, by Malfurion's banning of pack form, called for the Archdruid's death. Many Caldore disagreed and rose to defend Malfurion. Some were killed, and many were bitten, transforming them into Worgen. Malfurion escaped, however, and created the Cenarian Circle to combat this new threat. He convinced Belisra to give him the Scythe of Elune, and banished the Druids of the Scythe to... Darl Nir, a tree within the Emerald Dream that would calm them and keep them in slumber for an eternity. However, Malfurion merely exacerbated the situation. Instead of soothing the spirits of the Worgen, the tree nourished their madness. They became more violent and savage and were not asleep. They were imprisoned with no way to escape the dream. 
The side of a loon eventually fell into the possession of a sentinel named Velind Starsong, who used its power to summon the worgen from the dream to fight the Burning Legion come again during the Third War. It is believed that she was granted a vision by a loon to the side's hiding place in Ashenvale. That being said, she lost control of the summoned worgen and was forced to seek out help having heard rumors of a Kirin Tor mage who knew of the worgen and how to summon them. Thus she traveled to the Eastern Kingdoms, but was never seen or heard from again. The size of a loon was lost in Duskwood and explains the presence of the worgen there. Of course, the magus that Valind was seeking out was named Erugal, and he did not know of Valind Starsong or the Scythe of a Loon. He had come across the research of a mage of Dalaran named Ur, who had stumbled upon an alchemical way to create super soldiers that he named the Worgen. Dalaran, having fallen to the scourge at this time, forced Erugal to flee to Gilneas, his home, which was being ransacked by the undead. Armed with the knowledge of how to summon the worgen from the dream and desperately trying to save his homeland, Erugal convinced King Gen Grainmane to allow him to summon the feral wolf men to deal with the scourge. The doors of the Grainmane wall had already been sealed at this point, and while the worgen did destroy the scourge presence, they also infected the vast majority of the Gilneans who are now trapped behind a wall of their own making. Now that I've dropped a little lore on you, we can actually get into the how to RP part of this video. One of the, the, the big things you need to keep in mind is that for the most part, all Worgen are Gilnean. They are not from Stormwind, they are not from Lordaeron, or Alterac, or Stromgard, or any place else. Any other human kingdoms. The curse that afflicts you was 100% contained behind the Grey Main Wall, which was sealed for 20 years, which you need to keep in mind when coming up with your age as a worgen. It is possible that you are human from other areas, but there are some complications with stories like that. For instance, there were a few humans left in Hillsbrad at this time. Most, however, had been killed by the Scourge, so there were not that many to infect with the Worgen Curse. You could be a human from Pyrewood Village, which is outside of Shadowfang Keep, who have since been absorbed into the Bloodfang Pack, led by Ivar Bloodfang. This would make you a former servant of Erugal. Keep that in mind. You can also be an ex-wolf cult member from Grizzly Hills, also known as the Blood Moon Pack. These worgen were formerly led by the Shade of Aragal, who was brought to Northrend by the Sunlane Princes at Arthas' behest to create more worgen for his army. It is also important to note that Aragal himself was not a worgen. Now there are not many of these left, as most of them were killed during the campaign in Northrend. Now, keeping in mind that most of you are Gilnean and most of you were trapped behind the Grey Main Wall, there is a large part of the history of Azeroth that is completely outside of your sphere of knowledge. Until the Cataclysm breached the Grey Main Wall, you were locked in Gilneas with yourselves, rage ridden, feral monsters. So while you have probably learned about what happened during that time, you have no direct recollection of the events that took place between the Third War and the Cataclysm. Previous to joining the Alliance, you have never seen a Night Elf, but you may have seen a High Elf. Those were still around. You have never seen a Draenei. You were unaware that the Lich King rose again and that we won. You didn't even know Northrend existed. That mess with Varian and Onyxia? Yeah, you have no idea what that was. Molten Core? What? What's a troll? Is that like an elf? Better yet, is that a walking cow person? Wait, we willingly went back through the Dark Portal? And the Forsaken? They're free? Undead from the Scourge? And they're absolutely horrifying. All of this is stuff you absolutely must remember when creating a worgen. All of those things that I just mentioned, those were news flashes when the Cataclysm hit. 
So now that we've gotten a little bit of the history out of the way, something else that you need to remember as a worgen is that you are in control of your forms. You have participated in a ritual that prevents you from devolving into a mindless animal. Those worgen trapped outside of Gilneas, they did not undergo this ritual, and so they are wild and uncontrolled. They are feral and generally cannot be captured to undergo the ritual. The potion slash medicinal supplement given to you after you turned was only a temporary fix. The ritual you performed with the night elves made it permanent. Something I feel is always important to mention, no matter what race you're dealing with, is re reproduction. Like normal humans, you reproduce like normal people. But the children of two worgen parents are human. Remember, being a worgen is not genetic, it is a curse. For a child of two worgen to become a worgen themselves, they need to be bitten by a worgen, and then undergo the ritual of balance, and some worgen may not want their children to be so cursed. And before you join the Alliance, you were fighting a civil war, and it is up to you to decide which side of that civil war you were on. One side was the Northgate Rebellion. Once led by Lord Darius Crowley, their purpose was to bring down the Grain Main Wall, which they thought was unfair to Gilnane Holdings outside of Gilnane's city proper. They were labeled as traitors and terrorists for refusing to abandon their people in Pyrewood and Ambermill, both of which belonged to Gilneas before the wall was erected. And the civil war ended when Sylvanas and the Forsaken invaded and sacked Gilneas city. The other side of this civil war was obviously the loyalist forces who remained loyal to King Greymane. Before the wall was built, the humans of Lordaeron begged Gilneas for assistance with the Scourge and were promptly ignored. Ultimately, this was the cause of the Civil War and is most likely the reason why many Forsaken who are from Lordaeron retaliated by sacking your home at the first given opportunity. <laughs> and lastly, if you are Gilnean Worgen, which most of you should be, you are painfully patriotic. Gilneas was very industrial, very Regency British, and very self-reliant. They primarily cared about themselves, and this breeds a lot of arrogance in the Gilneans and the Worgans as a whole. It's why they built the wall. They chafe at asking for assistance, and may even be ashamed of joining the Alliance, which was completely out of necessity. Gilneas is very Victorian England, though their treatment of women is significantly better. They are innovative and forward-thinking. They romanticize progress in individuals as a way of advancing Gilneas as a whole. Now, there are some other things, key things you need to consider when role-playing your worgen. Your strong sense of nationalism the level of your humiliation by recent events, and your reaction to the curse. Remember, you don't always have to have the feral thing going for you. Sure, it's most likely a part of your personality because it is a definitely a part of who you are as a worgen. But the Gilneans are genteel. They're very concerned about appearances and individual strength and valor. Losing control in a social situation is likely to be frowned on. That being said, when the going gets tough, you shapeshift into your worgen form whether you like it or not. Worgens, they're very much like the humans and the Forsaken, given that, like the Forsaken, they started off as uncursed humans. So that shouldn't really be a surprise. There is so much flexibility when it comes to being a worgen, so much room for complexity, an entire world of duality for you to explore. Feel free to play with your personality and realize that you do not have to act like a monster. Well, that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you like what you see and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to try to get some more of these videos out much, much faster, but understandably, these do take quite a bit of time to, to research and to edit and to put together. So please bear with me. More are coming. I am, as always, Inquisitor Aura. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we will see you again in Azeroth.